Perfect segue. Thank you, Don. What I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, a manifestation of a lot of fundamental research from materials discovery to materials development to component integration all the way to a battery. So this project here, this is an ARPA-E project. It's just about run its course. Uh, we're ending this July. This is a project sponsored by Advanced Project, Advanced Research Project Agency hyphen energy. So high risk, high maturity <coughs> technology. Uh, myself, I'm the PI in Mechanical Engineering Material Science, and also uh, Travis Thompson, he's moved on, but he was instrumental in getting this project off the ground, faculty staff. Also collaborated with Neil Daskupter, also Mechanical Engineering, worked on processing. Don Siegel did computation, so the work that he's done has uh, fed directly into this work. And then Professor Katsuya Thornton in Material Science, she does con um, continuum scale computation. All right, so what better college, I guess, to present this slide in. Let's not wait till that last drop of liquid dinosaurs comes out of the spigot. Let's focus on the transition. Let's try to develop the next generation super battery so we can facilitate this transition, accelerate this transition to an all-electric sustainable future. In the spirit of lightning talks, there's some lightning. I want to <laughs> highlight this because the uh, Battery Lab, the Energy Institute, is about half of this show on PBS Nova was showed about, um, aired originally on, uh, two years ago. All right, so when I worked, I worked at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in uh, 2000, 2007, and the dir director of NASA had this mantra, uh, faster, better, cheaper. So I, I like that, three aspects. So what I'm gonna talk to you about today, the three aspects that I think are the most important and comprise what the next generation battery should be, especially if it's gonna supplant a very good technology that's lithium ion that's powering our laptops and cell phones today. So when I talk to the auto industry, sure, ma weight matters for a battery, but really it's the size of the battery that they consider is one of the most important performance aspects. So if you plot the energy density, for example, on the vertical axis, that's watt hours per liter, as a function of range, that's range anxiety, which is what we're always worried about. Um, you can see the first generation Nissan LEAF. I have the Nissan LEAF here because it's an affordable electric vehicle, all electric vehicle. There are new generations. I rode over here and drove Don Siegel's Chevy Bolt. Great car. Uh, they're starting to plateau probably around 250 miles per range. The university, oh, sorry, university. United States Advanced Battery Consortium has this target of about 700 watt hours per liter. But to make this transition to an all electric powertrain that's affordable, and then we don't have to change as customers uh, of ve purchasing vehicles what the range is going to be, maybe 300 miles or more. We really need to get out there to about 1,000 watt hours per liter. So think about a 100 watt light bulb. Think about 10 of them. You want to run that for an hour, that's 1,000 watt hours per liter. Currently, it takes about two liters, a two liter Coke bottle, for example, to run those 10 light bulbs for one hour. So we need to cut that in half to meet that metric. Oh, I think somebody, maybe I get the message. Okay, trying to go faster. Uh, <laughs> safer is the next one. We've seen this in the news quite a bit, right? So this is uh, the Tesla. Um, Ooh, that didn't play, but there's a laptop manufacturer, no, sorry, a cell phone manufacturer that had some issues about a year ago with exploding cell phones. Uh, the aviation industry also had some issues. The liquid inside of our cell phones, not to alarm anybody, but it's combustible, right? <laughs> so if we can get do away with all the combustible components within a cell phone or our uh, EV, we can improve safety. And then there's cost, the last one. So shown here, this is like an economy of scale plot. So if on the vertical axis, we have the cost in uh, dollars per kilowatt hour. The vertical axis, that's how big the factory is. So for example, the Tesla factory is about a two gigawatt or more hour per year factory. So you can see things kind of go asymptotic based on these different cell chemistries. Not, I don't want to go into detail there, but they all seem to plateau around two gigawatt hours. Two gigawatt hours. All right, so for a, self, or a battery pack in the, the Tesla, it's about $15,000. All right, so what's the solution? Get rid of that liquid electrolyte that's flammable, replace it with a solid state electrolyte that can conduct ions as fast or even faster than a liquid electrolyte. It's non-combustible and it gets better with increasing temperature. So if you get rid of, a battery has three electrodes, three components, anode, cathode, electrolyte. This is what's in our lithium ion battery. We replace that with the holy grail electrode that's metallic lithium. This is drawn to relevant scale. You can cut the size of the battery in half. If it's an EV pack, you can do away with the thermal management. It wants to get hotter. It wants to operate at higher temperatures. What we need is a solid electrolyte. On to my last slide. This is what we're making here on campus in the Energy Institute. We're making these ceramic electrolytes. 
this ceramic is made in air. It conducts uh, lithium ions four times faster than a liquid does at room temperature. And we figured out how to pair it with the metallic lithium, the Holy Grail electrode. Double the energy density, more conductive, non-flammable. Can fabricate it in air. We do this in the battery lab. Um, demonstrated unprecedented performance. We got a plus up from ARPA-E that starts in July to fund this the, uh, commercialization. So with that, I'd like to stop and hope to talk to you after the presentation.